the baby boomers. Whiny, narcissistic, self-indulgent people with a simple philosophy. Give me it, it's mine! Give me that, it's mine! These people were given everything. Everything was handed to them. And they took it all, took it all. Sex, drugs, and rock and roll, and they stayed loaded for 20 years and had a free ride. But now they're staring down the barrel of middle-aged burnout, and they don't like it. They don't like it, so they turn self-righteous. And they want to make things hard on younger people. They tell them abstain from sex, say no to drugs. As for the rock and roll, they sold that for television commercials a long time ago. So they could buy pasta machines and stair masters and soybean futures. Soybean futures. You know something? They're cold, bloodless people. It's in their slogans, it's in their rhetoric. No pain, no gain. Just do it. Life is short, play hard. Shit happens, deal with it. Hi, everybody. My name is Skandosis JR. I am also known as the King of Gay Music. And this is called The Boomer of All Problems. I don't know that much about you, but I bet they call you Dick Soft. Dick Soft, Dick Soft. Tripping tons and tons of nuts. Rub it all around my butt, huh? The Boomer of All Problems is about me growing up as a Gen X with boomers for parents. <sighs> I don't even know where to begin. So many things happened through my childhood all the way up and through to my adulthood. So you should know that I have cut my family off from my life for my life because I would not have one unless I had did such. So let's start with my childhood. I was given a pet birth by a boomer to be raised by two boomers who adopted me. I grew up in a middle class home. My father was the worker. He would go early in the morning and come back late at night. My mother was the one that I spent the most time with. To give a good explanation was like living with two giant brown bears that are always on defense. She would say, she would say shit to piss him off and send him off and he would do the same to her. And it was like always watching monsters, Godzilla and Kong fight, except Kong was just as powerful as Godzilla. They would just do this shit all the time. Don't comment on that because then this turns to this. Yelling and screaming and this and then, uh, why didn't I go to college when I should have or wish I could have said, I didn't go to college because you blocked me from going to college. Let me tell that story. My mother is what I would call a saboteur. What meeting? <laughs> With the FBI, Dad. Pay attention. Hey, you know what? I'll take his cluelessness over her sabotage any day of the week. My what? You heard me. You're sabotage. You're a saboteur. Saboteur! If you have a narcissistic parent, the narcissistic parent is not going to want you to do well in life. You were used to the ups and downs, the highs and lows, and the push and pull, and walking on eggshells, and, and you performing for your mother and your father, and you're trying to get love and earn love. When love is supposed to be given just from the heart. Why well, I gotta perform to get love from you? You had to perform for the narcissist to get love. You had to do and be what they wanted you to be to get a little break from of love from them, right? You could never get love from a person like that because they don't know what love is. Um, but in order to get up there, you have to have basic needs. So things like food and shelter are at the very bottom. So people who don't feel safe, who don't have regular food and shelter, those are the folks who grow up and have a, a difficult time managing relationships, keeping jobs, keeping those things together because they didn't get those needs met. Then on the next level is uh, love and belonging. And so that's why I'm fucked up right there. <laughs> you ain't even got to get to the third oh, one. It's safety. So it, it might be safety and then love and belonging, but if you don't both you yeah. fucked up in both areas. If if you don't feel like the people around you love you, care for you, will keep you safe, then you're not gonna get to the next phase. Can't keep can't feel safe if I've been molested by eleven different individuals. high school you know so I was getting ready to get a scholarship 
for four years to Clark Atlanta. I was so happy because the teacher was like, I'm going to get you the scholarship for what you're doing here because you can go there and be great. And I go home and I'm telling my mother, because you know, that's something to be proud of. I had just been offered a scholarship. She came up to that school the very next day while I'm in class, by the way, cussed the teacher out. And I mean, cuss. Bitch, you ain't doing this. This motherfucker ain't going. Hell, motherfucker. You know, all of that shit. Took me, I enrolled, unenrolled me from this class. Middle semester. Puts me in home ec. And then she wonders why I'm gay. Puts me in home ec. And keeps me from going to college. And then puts me into a... I ain't hating on two-year colleges. I'm not. But then she puts me into that. Instead of letting me go to a four-year school. Free, by the way. Saboteur. And this is not the only thing that she sabotaged, by the way. Just to be clear. She would give me compliments. But the only time she would give me compliments is in the presence of a third party, third, fourth, or fifth party. When we're alone, oh, I'm the worst person to ever get breath. I'm a horrible kid. You're this, you're that. You're ugly, you're fat. Well, she didn't say ugly, I'm sorry. But she did call me out of my, she said I was overweight. She used to laugh <laughs> and all of that type of shit. When I was in front of somebody. Oh, I'm so happy to have him. When I met my birth mother, she sat on the phone and said, I'm a blessing and all stuff. And I'm just looking at her like, what? That is not the shit you say to me when we're alone. At all. At all. You know, and I could almost hear people saying, well, this is everybody's childhood where it shouldn't have been. Watch you like a hawk. This is her saying, I'll watch you like a hawk. You know, you would think I have an overprotective mother. And in some ways she was when I wanted to do something. This is emotional neglect. Um, I'm a Gen Xer. We had absolutely no adult supervision. We had no one involved in our education. No one asking how your grades went. You had to figure that out yourself. No one really parenting us. No one emotionally invested in our well-being. How are you doing? How are you feeling? Who are your friends? What's happening here? That Adults were just like around us. We basically got older around some people. That's what emotional neglect is. And I'm sorry to say this for the boomers, but they don't feel responsible for your emotional well-being if your parents were boomers they don't think that was their job that really is how i'm sorry but that's how they feel and i know they don't like it what that's the truth it's however where was those eyes at when i was being molested by 11 different people for three years straight where was those eyes at there was one time this dude was molesting me right in our own backyard. She was in her bedroom. Mind you, the window in their bedroom shows right out into the backyard. Nothing. Crickets. I have been molested in my own home growing up at least 10 times. Sometimes by the same person. See. When I told them that I had been molested at the age of 25, do you want to know what she said to me? Nothing. What year is it? It's 2023? I told them that when I was 25. I am now 45. She has yet to even say a word to me about it. Now, oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, I can't believe it. Really? Who? None of that. To this day. Boomers were such bad parents that the national television news had to run commercials asking at 10 and 11 o'clock, do you know where your children are? That's all you need to know about boomers. They're cold, bloodless people. It's in their slogans, it's in their rhetoric. No pain, no gain. Just do it. Life is short, play hard. Shit happens, deal with it. No emotional blood from this woman, ever. But from what I'm starting to understand, boomers are like that all the time. Every time I talk to a boomer, I'm sure it's not all. Not saying all. Most. Not saying all. I have an auntie who cares about her son. She, I'm sure, has some, at least I believe, emotional care for him. 
I can't say that about all of them. I was not protected. It got so bad that when I was seven, I attempted to run away from home. Of course, I didn't get far. I'm seven. Where the fuck am I going to go? Who's taking me in? Where, where, I don't even have a car at seven. Where am I running to? But yeah, I mean, it was really difficult. I mean, I'm talking about beatings. I'm talking about being lied on. One time my father came home and something of his was destroyed or broken or something like that. And she did it. She blamed me and he whooped me for that shit. And I mean, one of those world class whoops. And then she comes back an hour later and gives me cookies and ice cream and says she's sorry for that. But this was not the only time that she did that. Which, by the way, that cookies and ice cream, while being sad and angry and frustrated and nervous, lifelong trigger. Still working that shit out in therapy. So yes, therapist, you were right. I am a sugar addict. I am still trying to figure out how to get rid of this. Uh, I guess there is some emotional, bad emotions. So yeah. No, I, I tried so hard to be the best child. It got so bad that I remember the first day of high school. <laughs> My English teacher, Miss Small, I'll never forget her. She was surveying her classroom. And I don't know what was on my face. I really don't. I, I would just remember being sitting there. She walked up to me and she said, stop trying to please her. She will never be happy. Mind you, I didn't even say my name. I didn't say anything. This is the first day of class. I think maybe two or three minutes passed in her class and this is what she said to me. Stop trying to please her. She will never be happy. The more you please her, the more unhappy you will, you will be. And of course, since I was a kid, you know, I didn't understand it fully. And yes, of course I tried to please her. I remember she wanted me to be on an honor roll. I finally got on an honor roll. On my report card, it said honor roll. You know what she did? She cussed me the fuck out because I really, I don't know. She was talking to her neighbor and I was so happy I came home. I was like, mama, look, I want honor roll. She cussed me the fuck out. And not to mention, of course, if you've seen my <laughs> coming out day story, you know that she kicked me out for being homosexual. You know, throwing plates at me. I left that part out of the story because I didn't want to make it dark. But yeah, she was throwing shit at me. And I know that had to be, I don't know, because I heard a story about her mother throwing plates at her. You know, but yeah this is what it was being raised by i have cut them people off right before corona i stopped i cut them off in 2018 it is now 2023 going into 2024 and I have to say my life has been so much better. She's currently hoovering me. The flying monkeys are trying. They're not working. I cut them off too. So yeah. But this has been the life that I have lived. That I've kept to myself. I made a couple of songs about it, you know. But yeah. That's it. There are so many, many stories and elaborations I could do. But I wanted this to be an overview. And uh, if you have any, if you were raised by a boomer <laughs> and you found them to be problematic in your life, some of you don't even realize it because you like this, you still got mud in your eyes, you think that shit was normal, it wasn't. I thought it was normal. I thought this is what a family was supposed to be like. I thought this was love. If you have stories to share, you want me to, to elaborate on some of the things I told you and you want to hear more stories because they're so wonderful, I'll be willing to tell you. But hopefully you enjoyed this first episode of Boomer of All Problems. <laughs> I love you much. Thank you for your time. Need them hoes down on their knees. Surprise, bitch, that bitch is all the last to me. Huh, huh.